So if we can't keep calm or, or count on America becoming an invulnerable fortress where nothing will ever happen again, what are we supposed to do? And after I left government, I realized that all my experiences has taught me one thing, a lesson I learned from being a mother, a wife, a citizen, and a public servant. So, my parents are here. Um, stuff happens. It's liberating. It really is. A citizenry that accepts those two words as a fact can now begin to take charge of their own security for themselves and their families. Homeland security is ultimately about risk reduction, whether it comes from climate change to brothers at a marathon or Ebola from West Africa. Yes, there are things can, our society must do to alleviate the risk, reduce carbon emissions, push for gun control, invest in a stronger healthcare system. But there are things that you can do too at home to ready yourselves to bounce back faster and riser, wiser for when, not if, something happens. In more learned company, stuff happens is actually known as resiliency, though I prefer the term grip. It's more active, more in your face. It says, we got this, you got this, grip. True grip lies somewhere in between keep calm and never again, between chilling and fighting, between yoga and combat. The word resilient actually has its Latin roots are illustrative here. Re meaning back, but cilient meaning jumping. It's not passive. Literally, the capable, capability to jump back. It's a unique combination of determination and the ability to get yourself up and not look back after an incident. Our safety rests on policies in various stages of implementation and several that need to be implemented to fortress our resiliency. But our, our grip cannot rest on these policies alone. The experts, including myself, used to think so. Actually, it belongs with you. I recognize this now only because I have sp spent that career in the terror and disaster management trade, or as my husband likes to say, my disastrous career. My experience as an expert made me realize just how little the government prepared Americans or explained to them how you could become more resilient, making the nation more resilient in turn. No government ought to guarantee perfect security because no government can actually provide it. I'm not saying we can or should forgo preventative or defensive measures, but if that's all we're, we've got, we are in trouble. Keeping calm is not enough in a world of lone wolf terrorists, cyber attacks from anonymous sources, and viral outbreaks. Never again can't help when global warming inevitably strikes us again. What can help is when we are focused our efforts on bouncing back after these things occur. So how do societies actually implement resiliency? Because we just tend to throw the word out there. How do we bounce back? Well, actually, it is built on five foundations. First, systems have redundancies and spare capacity. Just think, this is easy to think about, right? Most hospitals have backup generator systems. You don't put every, all your eggs in one basket. Second, they are flexible, adapting in the face of disaster. They are simply not tied to the status quo. A medical facility public health tent reserved for exhausted runners of, after a marathon can turn into a emergency room triage center for the 25,000 runners in the Boston Marathon after the, uh, after the terrorist attacks. Third. Systems are built fail-safe. This is one of my favorite ones. So should they occur, the entire system does, doesn't go down. Super Bowl 2013, you all saw half the Super Bowl in dark. I, being the person I am, saw the other half in light. The electrical grid there was built in a way that any stress on the system would only take half of it out. As I can attest, annoyed sports fans are far, far more preferable to citizens panicking in darkness. Fourth, they can rapidly rebound. Such communities, meaning that in this case, meaning that disruptions are limited in time and scope. Hurricane Sandy is evidence of this phenomenon. Phenomenon: The flooded metropolitan transit system was up and running within a week because of a series of structural fixes that had been put into place after previous floods. They learned how to rapidly rebound. And this gets to the last point. That's kind, that's kind of wonkish. But if you look, evaluating, taking corrective action. Finally, these societies have the capacity to, to learn from the past. This is often called the feedback loop of misery in homeland security. Something bad will happen. 
But if we can learn, then the next time stuff happens, we will perform better. And each time that happens, citizens are less likely to feel completely disrupted or traumatized. Disasters, of course, bring their own sort of havoc. But if the havoc can be minimized because we are better at what we do, then the nation can move on quickly and then brace for the next time. Because there will be a next time.